Good morning, everyone. How are you all doing? Fantastic, I hope. How have things been going? We've had a great month. You have had some fantastic lessons. And they have all been about what? Peace. Do y'all remember what peace is? I know you all do. What is it? Peace. Getting even with peace. Getting the other person peace. Showing them that they That's not peace. Whoa. Peace. Proving you care more about each other than winning an argument. That's much different. <laughs> yeah. It's not about getting even. Showing somebody that you're right. It's not even about getting the last word. It's kind of selfless. Not, not selfish, selfless. Meaning not caring about what you can get out of it. Not really concerned about What's in it for you? It's tough, isn't it? Because you know you're right. You was yeah, up all night. You, you asked this person, and they were gonna come with you, and you're gonna be able to say, "Da da da." See, I told, I told you I was right. We get all worked up. No one. But the trick is this. Even when we know we're right, even when we've gotten all the facts and we've gotten some people that's able to say, hey, he is right or she is right, that person that you're trying to prove it to, they don't feel any better. You may have lost a friend. You, you may even made him somebody that doesn't like you anymore. So we find ourselves in a situation where we can make peace. The memory verse is like this. Right finger there. Echo buttons on. So let us do all we can to live in peace. been there before. I had it first. You just want it because you saw I had it. You weren't even over here. You made me <laughs> I told y'all this hell no. No, it's just like the back of his hand. We all have been there. 
we've, we've all been in a situation where we've had our fists balled up and our teeth gnashed. And our eyebrows bent down. One thing, if you ever been right, prove you was right, and then turn around and look at the person that you proved that you was right to, did, did they congratulate you on being right? Did they even tell you thanks for showing me you was right? How about this? Do they pat you on the back and say, thanks for correcting me? Not at all. Not at all. Oftentimes, we find ourselves not even speaking to a person. That person dodges you every time you see him. <laughs> because you can't wait to make eye contact with because you want to remind them how right you are. Oh, Mr. Elmo, no. How you were able to rub it in their nose. What did you gain, though? What did we really get? takes us out of the equation. Yeah. It makes us humble ourselves. I, I know it's not the fact that we're right or wrong. And I know you say, what I'm supposed to do? Just act like I wasn't right? Or act like I didn't tell him? Or act like I didn't tell him? Or act like he didn't take my... It just says, let us do all we can. So that means even when we talk to people about what they've done, we're not done. We say it in a way that we're wanting to still maintain the friendship with. That we're only trying to help. Not to demean them, demoralize them, but to lift them up. This week, Girls, this is the kind of person I hope you all grow up to be. Guys, we need to learn from this lesson. I don't know if y'all have time, but it's a great lesson. And we could all apply it in our lives every day. We could all look for situations to be a, be a peacemaker. I'll be right back. Glad to have you all back. <sighs> have y'all ever been in a sticky situation, a tough situation? where somebody was upset with you and you didn't know how to settle them down, didn't know what to say, you explained as much as you could. Done all you could. At times, there needs to be somebody to intervene. A peacemaker. We could all be that peacemaker for somebody. In today's story, 
This happened a long, long, long time ago. It's actually back in the days of David, before he was king. You can actually look in 1 Samuel chapter 25, verses 1 through 35. And guess what? It's packed. Yeah, it's a lot of stuff we can learn. Well, to set up the story for you, this is before David became king. Yeah, yeah, you all remember, huh? He was running from King Saul. He had his men, and he was going from place to place. Well, in all that, <laughs> you get tired, don't you? You get thirsty. What else do you get? You get hungry. So his men were very hungry. Well, guess what they did? He sent just a few of his men, like 10 of them, down to this desert. Well, the desert, you would think, hey, doesn't have much. However, it did. It was a real rich guy. Yeah. And this rich guy, he really wasn't the nicest persons at all. He was mean, ugly, and guess what? He did like to share. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, fortunately, this guy had a wife. Well, his wife, she was totally opposite. She was wise, she was kind, she was giving. Well, guess what happened? The 10 guys that David sent down just to be able to say, hey, we're tired. We want some food. Will you help us? Nabal, which was the rich man, the one that was mean, the, the guy that didn't want to share his seat. He actually not only didn't give them food, but he embarrassed David's 10 men and sent them back. It's okay just to say no, but why did he have to embarrass him? David took that as an insult. So when his 10 guys came back, David was furious. Wouldn't you be hungry, tired? The, the guy that you actually looked up to, King Saul, and the guy that's your best friend, his dad, is trying to kill you? You're pretty aggravated, aren't you? We could find ourselves being aggravated and agitated. So guess what David did? He made peace. No! <laughs> Not at all. Just like many of us. Many of us are just like David says, I'm going to show you. David took 600 of his men and he was going to storm down to kill Nabal. And he was going to take what he wanted. Yeah. Guess what happened? One of Nabal's servants told his wife, Abigail. Remember the wise lady? The wise wife? The one that was kind? And what she did is she told the servants, hey, go pack up some camels and get some raisins, some dates, all kinds of things that you would want to welcome somebody with. You all go ahead and I'll be right behind you all. And they did so. Well, when Abigail saw David and all his men, what do you think happened? 
These are fighting men. These are men that was coming to kill. God gave her enough courage to be able to say, I'm going to do what's right. I'm going to put myself in a situation to make peace. So she sees King David from afar off. And she jumps off of her horse. And she basically bows down to David. He wasn't even the king yet, you remember? She bows down. Just to show King David, hey, not only did I send you some what you wanted, and even more, but I have something to explain to you. There may be a misunderstanding. I can actually read it to you for just one second. When you think about it, I would be kind of fearful myself. She says in 1 Samuel 25, verse 24 through 26, let me take the blame myself. Don't pay any attention to that evil man Nabal, sir. The Lord has kept you from killing Nabal and his men. He has kept you from using your own hands to get even. Abigail reminded David who he was in God. God didn't give him these men to go around and get even with people. God didn't give us these positions that we can act out our own will. So what did David do? Yeah. He saw things much differently. David then did all he could to live peaceably with Nabal. But most importantly, Abigail was willing to get out of her comfort zone because she wouldn't have had to fight. Probably nothing would have happened to her even if David had came down and killed all the men. But it was in her heart to be able to do all she could to live peaceably with us. Well, I know you all don't have any dates or raisin cakes, but you may have some Skittles. You may have an ice cream cup. I know it sounds silly, but just being able to give somebody Skittles ice cream cup, even gun bears can make a person say, huh, maybe I've overreacted. Maybe I wasn't looking at things with a clear head. Maybe I can step back and look at things a little bit differently. You all can do that with your cousins, with your brother, your sister, even your classmates. Let's take a page out of Abigail's book. I, I know we can. And let's not be like that evil man, Nabal. For no reason, knowing somebody's in need, not willing to help them. Having all you have unwilling to help. Just remember. Yeah. Peace. Until next time.